Hello, folks. This is Pastor Mike Hoggard coming to you from Watchman Studios with another Watchman video broadcast. Sightings. Last week, we started a new series called Sightings, and we are investigating and looking into the possibility that people, video cameras, photo cameras, CCTV cameras and webcams and security cams and ring door cams and everything else to see if it is possible that these cameras and people's eyes are capturing or having sightings of uh, spirit entities, ghosts, which is basically another word for a spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit of God and the way the King James calls it, the Holy Ghost of God, they're interchangeable. They are, they are speaking of one and the same person, the third part of the Godhead. Uh, ghost, poltergeist, we're going to look at that today. We're going to get the definition of it. Um, um, Familiar spirits, unclean spirits uh, the, that the Bible talks about, on and on and on. We're going to look at uh, examples, and if you, um, if you were a little jittery after watching the last episode of this, uh, today it's going to be worse. So right now, at the very beginning of this, because I, I have a picture to show to start out with right now. In fact, I have a couple of them to show. Uh, in fact, I have three of them to show. Right at the beginning here, um, just a warning to you uh, concerning you or maybe members of your family and especially your children, uh, that if things that go bump in the night or images of those things, if they... If they instill fear in you, if they scare you, if they make you uneasy, um, this is just a warning um, that you use your own best judgment when it comes to whether or not you should watch this, whether you should let your children see this. And, and let me say this, I've got examples here today of, of videos that'll absolutely blow your mind of children's interaction with spirits and one in particular is out of this world okay wait till you see this if you if you see it and is it possible that children and even your children or maybe your grandchildren have the ability to see things that us adults and maybe older children can no longer see. Is it possible that young children who are of an age to where they can't really express themselves the way we do, is it possible that those entities in the spirit world will allow the younger children of this world to both see them, talk to them, hear them, and have an interaction with them. I have seen quite a few videos uh, that make me believe that that is possible. And the video that I have selected for this episode, uh, maybe it'll make a believer out of you. Now, some, some people say that all of these videos are hoaxes, all of them, okay? I don't believe that. I've tried to, I've tried to narrow all the videos that I have collected over the years. I've tried to narrow them down to the most believable ones. In other words, the ones that don't look like uh, some, something that you used After Effects and Blender on to try to put some sort of computerized graphic in there to make it look like that somebody's seeing a ghost or whatever. Uh, photographs, some of which date back to a time before photo editing software of any kind, much less Photoshop. Uh, and so there, there are some 
videos and some pictures that are out there that, are, that really literally have no other explanation other than it appears that they captured something, I, I'll use the phrase that they use, something from the other side. The other side of what? The other side of the computer monitor? No. Something from the realm of spirits, which we as Bible-believing Christians know to be true. So let me start out. Here's an example of a photograph. It's not really a video. It's a photograph. Uh, the building is one of these old, old hotel buildings that probably date back to around the turn of the century, the, uh, the, the 1900s, from the 1800s to 1900s, not 1900 to 2000. Uh, but anyway, around the turn of that century, and uh, somebody took a photograph of the interior of this beautiful old uh, lobby and stairwell, and um, whether they were aware of it or not, that they actually took a photograph of what appears to be, take a look, what appears to be some form of spirit entity. Um, I would call this one a familiar spirit uh, for these reasons. Number one, uh, it's in a familiar form. This is, this looks like uh, a human woman. Now, what's interesting to me is, is that you can see the dress. You can see uh, at least one arm and hand fairly well. You can see the, the torso of this particular, uh, what looks like a woman. Uh, but generally, generally what seems to always go wrong with these pictures is that the face is not discernible. You can't get a clear uh, view of the face. You uh, know there's very few photographs out there that actually have a very clear image of the face of various of these spiritual entities. Uh, it looks like the woman is dressed from the period right around the turn of the last century from 1899 to 1900, 1905, 1910. That sort of style of dress, uh, just standing there on that stairwell. And um, to me, I believe that it is a genuine photograph of a spirit entity that was captured inside this hotel. Here's another one. Now this dates not so far back. This probably, the way I'm looking at everybody and the way they're dressed, it looks like, uh, looks like my time. It looks like something from the 80s. Um, this is from El Paso High School, El Paso, Texas. Uh, it's a class photograph. And there is, and you see it circled there. There is a young lady standing there that those who have seen the picture, those who were part of this picture, who were in the picture, you have teachers in the front, you have students sort of in the back, they're all very nicely dressed, it must be picture day at the school, and uh, they're doing like a class photo or something like that, and no one, none of the teachers, none of the students, the lady, young lady standing to uh, the right of whatever this is, none of them, recall that there was someone else standing there and obviously no one here in this picture knows who this person is. But notice again, we have a, a white, a long white dress. We have long hair, so obviously it's a female. The What face we can see looks feminine. And uh, once again, uh, although we can make out in various uh, people of this picture, you can see that some are wearing glasses, some uh, you can see their nose, their eyes, their mouth. Uh, on here, you barely see any mouth and you, you see two dots there toward uh, the top of the face. Those would be the eyes. You don't see a nose. Um, again, the face seems distorted in some way uh, or covered in some way, or a, as if maybe the face uh, did not quite, it, it, part of it was still 
in the other realm, the spiritual realm. And again, what's interesting to me is no one who was taking this picture saw this young lady standing there. No one has any remembrance of someone being there. They obviously don't know who it is. So once again, we have a situation where I'll just go ahead and say it like this. It looks deliberate. It looks like we have a spirit entity that wants to be seen in this photograph, but not necessarily be seen by all of the people that are also part of taking this photograph. For what reason? We don't know. But again, if I'm right on this, this looks like something from the 80s. I can tell you that my Commodore VIC-20 or my Commodore 64 computer did not have the graphics capabilities to alter a photograph like this. It just wasn't around. So once again, I believe a genuine photograph of a spirit entity. Now, the third one that I have to show you, I'm trying to get your attention on this. And I, believe me, I've got a, a lot more, uh, mainly videos to show you. And some of them freak me out. Okay. Uh, and I've been sort of looking into this for years, about as long as I've been looking into UFOs. Um, somebody um, is, is on a trip. Uh, this is the setup for it. This is more recent, I believe. Someone's on a trip and um, they make it to their hotel where they're staying. Uh, for some reason, they decide whether it was, uh, I don't know, maybe someone who wanted to verify that they were actually staying where they said they were staying, you know, for whatever reason. People have their reasons. Or maybe this person just wanted to show uh, family back home. Hey, look at the place that I get to stay in. Boy, this is really nice. It, just something like that. But they're taking uh, pictures of their really nice hotel room. The TV is on. The TV's up against the wall. You'll see that it's on playing some sort of uh, sports game. We don't really know what it is. You can make out the word Fox there. Um, they take a picture of the wall and it shows the TV and it shows part of one of these big oval shaped wall mirrors. You know, the kind that you would walk up to before you walked out of the room and make sure your hair was straight and your tie or whatever, your clothes were on, you know, right side out and so on. And without really being aware of it, they ended up taking this snapshot from a digital camera. Take a look. Now you automatically see the circle there and you see two little eyes glaring, glowing back at the camera. If we zoom in a little bit, then you can see the obvious outline of what looks like a little boy's face. Small, you can make out a small nose, small mouth, uh, short hair, the, like I say, the glowing eyes. Just there, right at the, the bottom part, the bottom corner of that oval mirror. Now, being that close to the mirror, obviously the entity isn't or doesn't appear to be standing right in front of the mirror where you would where you would expect to see someone who is that close to the mirror is it possible then that the little boy or this I'll we'll call this a familiar spirit as well is inside the mirror looking out listen when it comes to the spirit world when it comes to uh, what I believe is a, an entire spiritual world, a spiritual dimension uh, marked in the Bible by the number four, which seems to represent a fourth spatial dimension. 
you know, we have three dimensions in the world we live in. We have this direction and this direction and this direction. But the Bible plainly teaches, starting in Ephesians 5, I've done several videos on this. Look for anything that I've done dealing with the fourth dimension, and I'll show you from the scriptures, line upon line, precept upon precept, exactly what the Bible says about the fourth dimension and the fact that we have four types of ghost enemies that we wrestle with every day, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spirit, spiritual wickedness in high places. And I believe that because they are from a higher dimension that we don't currently understand how it works, how a person could be in this dimension and their dimension at the same time, we, we just don't understand that. And yet I believe the Bible teaches it to be true. So is it possible that he is literally on the other side of that mirror looking into this room? I think it's very, very, very possible. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 4. This is some of the scriptures that I used last week when it comes to um, the subject we were dealing with last time, uh, dealing with uh, being people being possessed by evil spirits, uh, whether you call it devil possession, demon possession, um, you know, the Bible uses various terms for it, he hath a devil, and so on, and, uh, or those that were possessed by devils is how the King James Bible puts it. Let's take some of those verses now and use it uh, to learn more about the spiritual entities that we're going to be looking into this week. We'll start with Matthew chapter 4, verse 24. The Bible says, And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases, and I want you to notice this, torments. And those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. Now, let me just deal with the, the better part of this verse. The fact that my Savior, my God, my Lord, my friend that sticketh closer than a brother, uh, my brother, we are sons of God, um, my Creator, the one who hears my prayers, carries it over to his Father, and the Father gives answer to those prayers. I love Jesus Christ. I do. And I like the fact that there is none of these issues, divers' diseases, torments, people possessed with devils, lunatics, meaning people who had psychological problems uh, and that had the palsy. I have a granddaughter who has a form of cerebral palsy, okay? Uh, that none of these are above his ability to either cast them out or heal them. That's what I like. I think that I have chosen the right God to serve because I believe that our God that we serve, Jehovah, the Lord of hosts is his name, the most high God, God, the Almighty God, um, Jesus Christ, the God that we have chosen to worship is God above all gods. There is no God that is above Him. There is no force that is more powerful than He is. He can cast devils out of anybody He wants to. And all you got to do is read the four Gospels and see Jesus' interaction with different spirits. We saw that last week, how that when the spirits knew that Jesus was around, they were like, ah, Jesus, thou most, uh, the son of the most high God, what have we to do with thee before the time? And they freaked out. It's because they knew Jesus had more power, than had more authority than they did. And so I like that part of it. But I want you to notice, I focused in on this phrase, the people that were taken with divers diseases and torments. And I got to thinking about that word. And when I looked it up there, our 
our Bible search software. You ought to get a copy of it, purebiblesearch.org. Uh, download it for free. It has Webster's 1828 Dictionary. And the reason why I like that dictionary is that it's very, very close to the King James Bible. It's, it's like Webster used the King James, um, especially he used verses from the King James as part of his illustrations of what certain words me meant all the way back then. You don't see that anymore, but Webster's 1828 did that. And when I looked up the word torment and exactly what it was, here's, here's Webster's 1828 uh, definition. Extreme pain, anguish, the utmost degree of misery, either of body or mind. And so just think about this for a minute. Let's say that, uh, let's say that you, uh, you, you inherited a house or you bought a house real cheap. Uh, it was like uh, a third of the price that it normally would be. And you think, man, I got a steal on this one. Well, you didn't know that, you know, like every member of the family had been slaughtered there by another member of the family. You didn't know that. And so uh, you bought the house and you moved in and all of a sudden doors start slamming. Something's knocking from the other side of a wall where there's nothing there. Uh, something's knocking up in the attic, something's knocking down in the, in the basement or the raft skeller or whatever it is, uh, knocking and beating and you hear footsteps and all of a sudden you see stuff moving in the house. That's a torment. It's a mental torment. And not every torment According to the Bible, not every torment has to be something physical. And I believe some of these torments that Jesus dealt with were devils that were vexing and tormenting humans in various ways. Again, I mentioned a house or, you know, could be a place where you work. And there, there may be somebody who works there that is, their life is just full of devils. And whenever they show up for work, it just seems like devils just take over the building. And there's a torment that takes place with all of this poltergeist or spiritual activity. And it drives people mad. They just get to where they can't stand it. The Lutz family that was part of the uh, Amityville horror uh, incident that happened in the late 70s. They actually bought a house almost half price because uh, the Defoe family that lived there before them, they were all murdered by their son. There were six members of this family and their 19, 20, 21 year old son was watching some movie late night and at the end of the movie, he gets up, he grabs a shotgun, he goes in and he shoots every member of his family in cold blood. His, his little brother and sisters killed them, killed his mom and dad, doesn't have any remembrance of doing it. Some spirit just took him over and he killed everybody in that family. So when the, um, when the Lutz family moved in, of course, uh, I didn't know this until recently. You know, I, I watched the movie when I was young. Um, I think I read the book, or at least part of it, back years ago when I was when that movie came out. And uh, something that I didn't know about the Lutz family was that the the mom and dad, well, they practiced what we what was called then transcendental meditation. It's a form of Eastern mysticism and meditation where basically you go into a, a trance state, you empty your mind, and you talk to devils. Now, they don't introduce themselves as devils. You think that you are talking to some universal life force or whatever it is. You think you might think you're talking to God. But they're basically in communication with devils. And I think that that is what really helped lead to the spiritual things that went on in that house. And, and after only a month of living in that house, those people were so tormented, 
by that poltergeist activity, by those devils. The night that all of that happened, where they literally, after like 30 days living in this house, they, they took what they had on their bodies at the time, the clothes, they got in the car and they sped out of there never to turn, never to go back. They didn't want any of the clothes. They didn't want nothing from that house. That night, Kathy Lutz, the wife, her husband said she aged to look like somebody who was in their 80s or 90s that night because of the demonic activity that was going on, the fierce activity that was in that house. And he said it wasn't until after we left, and he said then it was like two or three hours after we were gone that her face, her visage finally turned back to normal, okay? I believe some very evil things went on in that house, and those people were definitely tormented. So let's take that idea and let's look at what a poltergeist is. This comes from a book I have called The Encyclopedia of Ghosts and Spirits, and it gives us an article about poltergeist, a mischievous and sometimes malevolent. That means it's an evil spirit. It's got malicious intent involved. It means to scare people, literally if they can, to scare people to death. You know, some people get so tormented by devils, they take their own life. That's what the, that's the madness that the devils drove them to, okay? Sometimes malevolent spirit or unknown energy that is characterized by noises, moving objects, and physical disturbances. Poltergeist comes from German words poltern, to knock, and geist, which means spirit. Reports of poltergeist disturbances date back to ancient Roman times, appear in the medieval records of Germany, China, and Wales, and continue to be reported from countries around the world. Poltergeists have been studied extensively by psychical researchers and parapsychologists since the 1890s. Various theories have been advanced to explain them. In earlier times, reports of poltergeist disturbances cite primarily rock and dirt throwing, flying objects, loud noises, strange lights, and other apparitions, terrible smells, rapping, not like, not, not that kind of rapping, rapping, physical and sexual assaults. People report um, poltergeist activity taking place, and all of a sudden, they have huge claw marks down the side of their face. They have no idea where it came from. They didn't feel anything touch them, but somebody would notice, what's wrong with your face? And they would say, what are you talking about? I said, man, you've got like claw marks on your face. They just appeared just like that. Those things happen. Physical and sexual assaults and shrieks. Modern disturbances include these plus high-tech antics such as light bulbs spinning in their sockets and telephones repeatedly dialing certain numbers, physical assaults, biting, spittings, pinchings, punchings, and sexual molestations continue to be reported in a small percentage of cases. You know, there's, there's names for those devils that practice sexual molestation, incubus and succubus. One is a female entity committing fornication with a human male. The other is a male entity, spirit entity, in entity committing fornication with a human woman. Those things happen too. Just read Genesis chapter 6. The sons of God took wives and they lay with them. And children were born. The same became the giants of old. Okay? So we're talking about real things verified by the Bible that these things take place. Poltergeist activity usually starts and stops suddenly. It may last from a few hours to years, but rarely lasts longer than a few months. Activity rarely takes place when no one is at home and usually occurs when a particular individual or agent is present. 
In the late 1970s, English researchers Alan Gauld and A.D. Cornell made a computer analysis of 500 poltergeist cases collected from around the world since 1800. They found 63 general characteristics, such as 24% of poltergeist incidents lasted longer than a year, 58% were most active at night, 48% included rapping sounds, 64% involved the movement of small objects, by far the most common phenomenon. 36% involved the movement of large pieces of furniture and 12% were characterized by the opening and shutting of doors and windows. In those cases where there was an, an apparent agent, a person who was the focus of the activity, it was most often female and under the age of 20 years. 16% of the cases indicated active communication between poltergeist and agent. Remember what I said last week? Jesus very seldom got into a conversation with the devil. Usually it was the devil's going, what are you doing here? What are you doing? We didn't do anything. We're just, you know, minding our own business. What are you, Jesus, what are you doing? You son of the most high God. It's, go on, leave us alone. Jesus like, Get out, okay? Go on, get out of here. I'm casting you down into the pit. And that'd be the end for them, okay? Because once they're in the pit, they're in the, that's like the jail for hell, okay? Uh, they're not coming back until judgment day. Um, so here you have some people, whether through like using a, some form of divination, like a crystal ball, which is scrying, or... Um, Oh, I don't know. Ouija board. Listen, if you're if you're at somebody's house and a Ouija board comes out and they say, hey, have you ever tried one of these? You leave. You leave. You don't even stay. You don't say, you know, could you put that away? We No, you say, look, I got to go. You got that in your house. I'm not going to be in your house. I am not going to be in the same place where that thing is. Ouija boards. I'm telling you, they're one of the most dangerous things that you could ever get involved with, okay? Stay away from Ouija boards. But you see right here, these spirits are looking for people who want to communicate. Now they use electronic things like spirit boxes that supposedly pick up words that are floating around. I don't know how, I don't know how those things work. Um, they will use other means to try to discern a spirit talking to them or whatever uh, and, and some way that they can talk to a spirit. And what's interesting to me is no matter what country and what language is spoken, the devils know all of them apparently. And so if these devils show up down in Brazil, well, they know Portuguese. They show up in Mexico. They know Spanish. They show up in Japan. They know Japanese. And in some cases, they look Japanese if they make an appearance because that's normal for them to see uh, is a, a Japanese face, okay? So that's what the term familiar spirit is. I made a list of some of the spirits... Um, based upon what maybe tradition has named them, what the Bible has named them, uh, naming them because of the type of spirit they are. Um, you have unclean spirits. That's a term from the Bible, uh, possibly because uh, it takes on the form of an animal that has been determined by the God's law to be unclean, like a pig. Uh, or a hawk of some kind, a hawk or an eagle, those are, or a vulture, an owl. Got more coming up about that. Um, but anyway, they take on the appearance of maybe of an unclean animal, so the unclean spirit. Familiar spirits, Deuteronomy 18, which the, the phrase spirit guides and apparitions fall under the category of familiar spirits, and we're going to learn about that later too. Lying spirits, such as in 1 Kings chapter 22. This is where Ahab was wanting to go to war, and all of his prophets said, Ahab, oh yeah, you're gonna win, you're gonna win the battle. That's a shoe-in. You're, you know, it's it's as good as done. 
And Jehoshaphat, who Ahab wanted to go into war with him, said, I want to hear from God. I don't trust these guys. And Micaiah, the prophet, said, I saw what went on in heaven. God had all of these uh, heavenly hosts, these angels, around them. And he said, who will go and convince Ahab to go to war tomorrow? And you had like, you know, hands raised. I see like a little classroom and hands raised. Oh, pick, teacher, pick me. Finally, God picks a, one spirit and the spirit says, I can do it. And God says, how? He said, I'll go be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. So one spirit, his influence and his power reached into, what was there, like some 400 men that were the, the, the prophets, the false prophets to King Ahab? And they, every one of them said the same thing. Go, go, go. The war is yours. You're going to win the battle. They have got slaughtered the next day. And that's what that spirit said. I'll go be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. So we have lying spirits. We have gods mentioned in Exodus 20. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now, if there were no gods, and they're always with a little g, if, there, if these gods didn't exist, then why would God have to have a commandment and say, you shall have no gods before me? These gods do exist. I pulled up a few books that I have in my collection that come from Google Books. They're older books written in the uh, late 1800s. And they, they were books about ghosts and spirits and haunts and things like that. And they were written by learned men uh, who were professors in various seminaries. And I was stunned. These men were writing and basically saying that ghost appearances and spirit activity and polter, poltergeist activity, that none of it's real. And the Bible really uh, doesn't give credence to that being real. And, you know, it's just basically people's imagination that makes that stuff up. And I'm like, you guys are Bible scholars. What you should be telling people is, hey, the Bible says this stuff is real. And, you know, here's, mm -mm. Uh, apparently there was a, a movement amongst those who were enlightened back in the 1800s to sort of shy away from anything of a supernatural nature. And that if you were a, a believing Christian, then you really shouldn't believe that there really are ghosts and haunted houses and things like that. Going, people are yeah, crazy. Devils. Main name for all of them. Be spirits. Revelation 4, the, uh, the four beasts that John saw that held up the throne of God. But then we have Revelation 13. We have a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Another beast, the dragon, gives him his power and seed and great authority. Then in Revelation 13, later on in verse 11, another beast rises up out of the earth. He's got... Uh, two horns like a lamb, and he's the false prophet. So we have these beast entities that make their appearance in the last days. Revelation 18, we find that Babylon is a cage or a holding place for all kinds of evil spirits, foul spirits, hateful, angry birds, devils, unclean spirits. So yes, there are beast spirits as well. And I think people see appearances of them from time to time. Uh, death spirits. Did you know that, I'm right here in Revelation here. According to Revelation, uh, let's see here. Yeah, Revelation 6 that there is a horse and a rider that comes out and this the pale horse is what I'm referring to and his rider is an entity called death 
and hell followed with him. You're being given a personification of death as if it was an entity, a spirit of some kind. So death spirits, people would, you could call it the grim reaper if you want to. And I do believe that there are spirits quite possibly that show up at the time of some poor lost soul's death and is responsible for taking them and leading them and casting them down into the pit called hell. And then we have the shadows. And I'll explain those as we go along. We got a lot of ground to cover. Now, I'm going to show you a verse of scripture and it has an image along with it. And I'll show the video here in just a minute. I've been seeing these faces in various videos and I was, at first was taken aback. I'm like, I've never seen anything like that before. Is that real? And the more I saw, the more I realized that it, it had to be real. Just the way that first they were there and then, I mean, less than a second later, they're not there and there's nowhere that they could have gone. Okay. Um, these spirits that have a very, very pale gray face. You know, when someone dies, obviously the red blood cells that make our faces rosy red, the heart stops pumping and those red blood cells, they all drain out of the face and it gives the face this grayish pale color. Uh, I know someone who has been in the um, funeral home business uh, for many years now and I've seen more than one dead body and they all basically have that appearance. All the red blood cells are gone out of their face and they have this gray, pale gray uh, face. Along with that, these particular entities, very, very dark around their eyes, including their eyelids, usually dark lips, very dark lips, and all black hair. And I'm going to be honest with you. You say, well, that's just like gothic kids. Most gothic type young people are overly infatuated with death. They wear black clothes, black fingernails, black lips, black eye shadow, hair jet black, face, they stay out of the sun, they, on purpose, face very, very pale. And now I believe, I understand where it is that all of these young people that act that way and dress that way and appear that way, I know what their inspiration came from. I believe it really came from actual spirits that take, either take on this appearance or it's how they look. It's how they were made and how they were created. Anyway, they're, because they're death spirits, they're unclean spirits. Okay, they fall under that category. Now let me show you the verse that comes out of Job. Take a look at it. Job 16, 16. My face is foul with weeping and on my eyelids is, there it is, the shadow of death. Wow. That verse nails it. That their face is just, it's got this death mask look to it pale, gray, no blood, no life in it whatsoever, no rosy cheeks, and, the eye, and on their eyelids is the shadow of death. And you take a look at this picture. Now, this comes from a video, and uh, I'm going to show you this video, and I'm telling you, you're, yeah, you're in for something. Take a look. 
It starts out this guy's doing a selfie. Maybe his dad or brother is laying next to him there in bed, and he catches a glimpse of someone laying next to him, and he turns the camera over there, the selfie camera, and he sees this laying next to the person there. He raises up and looks over there again, and instantly it's gone. Not to be seen again. That, my friends, I believe is a shadow of death, honest to goodness, pale face, evil spirit. Right there. And again, the camera picked it up. But obviously, he never saw that it was there. He didn't know it was there. Now, notice what the Bible says that goes along with that. The, 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 the word pale is only a couple times in the Bible. Maybe three or four times in the Bible. Notice there are two verses that really stood out to me that goes along with this kind of spirit. Isaiah 29, 22. Therefore thus saith the Lord who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob. Jacob shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. So the Bible's telling you that it is possible for at least a human and I would suppose an entity from the spirit realm to have a pale face. And what it means is death. Revelation 6, 8. Remember I mentioned these two beast spirits that uh, come out with the horse and the rider? Do you know what horse it was? Revelation 6, 8. And I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him. Notice that it's the pale horse that death and hell are riding on. Death is riding on it and hell is following right close behind. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. You know, it may be possible, I don't know exactly for sure, but it may be possible that the appearance of spirits like this may just very well be a harbinger of death. I have a video clip to show you, another pale face. This one's a little bit hard to see, and uh, so you kind of have to really focus and pay attention on it. But this is a, uh, this comes to us from China. This man, a Chinese man, is going through um, an old uh, mortuary where people are embalmed or people are cremated and all kinds of poltergeist activity is taking place there uh, at this abandoned, I've, I think it's an abandoned mortuary, okay? And this man, he knows that this activity is coming from someplace, and he raises the camera up, and he just happens to see where it's coming from. Take a look. Camera's kind of shaky. He's got a light going on. I don't think the lights work in this place because it's abandoned. Uh, that's an, uh, uh, like a, re a refrigerated area where the bodies would go on these drawers and the drawers would get put in. That's a crematory, I believe, where you cremate the bodies. And he is hearing doors slamming open and shut. And... Um, there's the crematory again, the front of it. And he notices right there uh, a fan hole to draw out any smoke that might be in the room. And he notices a very small, pale, there it comes right there, face raising up, taking, there it is right there. Taking a look at him, that's one of those death spirits with the pale face. There it is. There's a close-up right there. He sees that, and you can hear him. He loses it completely. <laughs> Wouldn't you? <laughs> you know, I, I often think of how I would respond 
if something like that presented itself to me, and it, it may. And I would hope, not trying to be Mr. Superhero, but I would hope that God would put it in me to stare one of these devils right in the eye and say, I am not afraid of you. You can't do anything to me that God won't let you do. So if you got something to do, let's get on with it. Otherwise, I suggest you leave. I'd like for any interaction I have with a spirit to go exactly that way. Uh, here's another one. This this will get you. This guy's, I guess he's hearing noises, so he's got his camera out and he's going around what looks like an apartment building and he hears a noise in a bathroom. And so he goes over to the door, he opens the door real fast and you're going to get to see what it is that he saw. Let's take a look at it. There he is. There's, I guess, his abuela, his grandma. He's going to open the bathroom door very fast. Yep. Oh, did you see it? He's, it was in the mirror. He goes in there. It's a small bathroom. The water's running. He turns water off. There's the, the loo. Like, again, a very small bathroom. But look, look, look what he, when he opens the door, this is what he sees in the mirror. That's a little blurry, so take a look at the screen capture that I got. That's part of that pale face. Notice the dark shadow of death eyes, the dark hair. Uh, if we could see the lips of it, we would probably see black lips. Now, here's the next one. Oh boy, they brought out a Ouija board. Imagine that. And it's in Spanish because the, it has the no and the C si on one side and then the other, which would stand for no and yes. And then usually Ouija boards have a place at the bottom where they say goodbye, but it's Spanish. So it's, I, I just, I don't know, for some reason, I just think that's funny. Adios! <laughs> You're telling the devil. Adios, muchacho! Anyway, so they pull out a Ouija board. And there, I, I don't know what they asked the spirit for, but as soon as they ask it, they hear a voice. And then they turn around, the camera turns around, and there, with, behind some clothes, is shadow of death face. Let's take a look. There, yeah, let's, that's a good idea. Let's get a Ouija board out. That way we can invite all kinds of devils over here, okay? So, they're doing the Ouija board thing. No, see, si, adios. Are you here with us? Yes, did you hear that? Guy turns around, he knows the sound came from behind him. And I paused this video. I tried to do it slowly because what you're going to see, it's, it's real fast. If you, if you just play it normally, you'll miss it. There it is. There it is right there. There it is. You can see the top of the head. And then it's just gone. It's like it never was there to begin with. And they go running. Now, let's do this like in slow motion. Are you with us? Yes. So, we'll slow it down a little bit. And you get a glimpse of the pale face, dark eyes, dark hair. See, doesn't it kind of make sense to you that the whole gothic thing is based upon a spiritual reality. Uh, here's one that was uh, filmed outside 
they're hearing noises coming from the woods and um, they spot one of these pale face entity entities outside in a wooded area. Let's take a look at it. Probably some sort of night vision or maybe they have a big, big light on the camera and they're searching for the source of sounds that they're hearing and they're about to find it. There it is right there. Pale face, dark lips, dark eyes, dark hair. Goes behind a tree and then disappears. Here it is again. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Now I'm saving, I hate to say the best. I hate to say the best. I'm saving, to me, the, the freakiest one for last. Okay? Uh, this one. Somebody's got a camera, got a closet door. A child's hand starts, oh, starts reaching underneath the door, grabbing at the little rug there by the door and reaching out. And at one point, the hand draws in and you hear a child's voice saying, help, help. So let me play this for you and see if you can pick up what I saw in it after I looked at it probably the second or third time. Let's take a look. You'll see the child's, there's the arm and the hand playing with the carpet. It withdraws. Listen, there it is again. Did you hear it? And that's the end of the video. Now they turn it sideways and play it. You get a better shot of the arm and the hand and something else. The entity saying help, help is interesting. Now I'm going to play this again. See if you can see the face of this quote-unquote child. See it? That is a very grotesque, macabre face. Does not belong with a child at all. And when they turn the video sideways, you get maybe a better look at it See it? See the eyes and the evil looking face on that thing. That's not a child. That, my friends, is a devil. Plain and simple. Maybe an unclean spirit, maybe a, a familiar spirit of some kind, but it's a devil. No doubt about it. Now, Again, the question is, why would, why would a devil or a spirit of some kind want to do something like this? I mean, it just looks like they're just playing with people, toying with people. Why would they just choose this, you know, this evil, evil presence, this evil look? Remember what I said last week. The devil's number one tool, or at least one that's right up there against all mankind, especially those who uh, claim to be Christians, his greatest tool that he uses, his greatest uh, weapon of warfare, is fear. Fear. 
Imagine living in um, Germany in 1940, 41. And the Gestapo has full control of just about everything. The SS, Hitler's um, secret police, basically they have carte blanche to, to inflict upon the German people anything that they deem necessary to make sure that everybody fully supports the Fuhrer Adolf Hitler. He makes all of his military men, whether it was the Luftwaffe um, or the uh, Waffen SS or just the regular army soldiers, he made them swear an oath of loyalty to not to the constitution of Germany, not to the laws of Germany, not to the people of Germany, but to one person, Adolf Hitler, and that they will give their lives in service to that oath to fulfill it so that Adolf Hitler has all the power that any one man could need to rule over first Germany, then Poland, and then Eastern Europe, and then Western Europe, moving all the way into France, taking over the Netherlands, taking over Norway, taking over some of the other Scandinavian nations, wanting, wanting to just destroy Great Britain if he can't make them come to terms and see him as the Fuhrer. And thank God for the British people who decided they just didn't want, they just weren't going to be Nazis. But Hitler used fear. And that's what the SS was all about. That's what the Gestapo was all about. That's why they did things publicly. If you, if they thought that you were not loyal to the Fuhrer, well then your death would be made public. What they did to the Jews was all about instilling fear in the rest of the German people. In other words, you see these Jews, see how they're being loaded up into trains and you know where they're going. They're not going to work camps and work in factories. We're just going to get rid of them. We're going to kill them all. And anybody who has anything to say against the Fuhrer Adolf Hitler will do the same thing to him and his whole family. How do you think Kim Jong-un rules over North Korea the way he does? I mean, you're talking about there's millions of people who live in North Korea. Surely they could band together and march their way into his compound and kill him and his whole family, right? If you've got a million people, surely there's, there's more people, you know, more, more of the people than there are in the government. Fear. Fear. You can't even get something like that started because you never know, but what if you say something to somebody and say, hey, let's start a revolution and let's get the Kim family out of North Korea. You probably just ended your own life right then and there because that person's probably going to go running to somebody in authority and they're going to have you killed, you and your family both. That's how it's done. The devil's tool is fear. Some people are afraid right now that the things that are happening in this world are leading up to the end of the world. Armageddon, the apocalypse, which I think is fine. I laugh every time they say uh, this, was, th this was done a, a, apocalyptic, um, in a, on an apocalyptic scale. I always laugh when they say that because they have no idea what the word apocalypse means. Apocalypse doesn't mean destruction. Apocalypse means revelation. That's what it means. But they've got people scared to death that they're going to lose their money. They're going to lose their house. They're going to lose all their food. 
people are scared. The Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And it may be that you would get through your entire life and never have to deal with or see anything like what I'm showing you in these series of videos. That would be great. God just may be protecting you from being afraid. But I like it that the Bible says that God didn't give us a spirit of fear. So I think there is a spiritual nature to fear. That also means then that the way to conquer that kind of fear is not through earthly means. It's through spiritual means. The power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Because Jesus said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The power of the Word of God to dispel spiritual fear is real. It's as real as these videos I'm showing you. It's as real as these entities are. And like I say, they're, they're in Satan's toolbox to use against people to rule over them because people are afraid they're going to get killed. People are afraid that it's going to hurt when they die. People are afraid of this and that. But the bottom line is, folks, see, if you're born again, death, it's not, it's not what we fear. Because what we have waiting for us on the other side of death is everlasting life. And I hope and pray that that is the life that you've chosen. And if not, I would choose it before the time runs out. God shut the door to the ark of Noah. Nobody got in, nobody left. God did that on purpose. There's coming a time, I believe, when God's going to shut the door again. And, in, and inside the ark, and the ark is Jesus Christ, inside the ark of God, God keeps all of his people safe. Like he did with Lot. Like he did with many others whom he protected. God knows how to save people. He's been doing it for thousands of years. Would you trust God to save you and to protect you even if the devil released spirits like this or worse on this earth. Would you be okay if God saved you through that? I think I would too. You're the reason why we do what we do. I got a lot more to give out. Uh, talking about familiar spirits and oh boy. I got a video of a young child that you just got to see, all right? That'll be in the next part of this series that we're doing, okay? God bless you. We'll see you the next time. Bye-bye.